Hallelujah. Are we here with God? Hallelujah. If you have the belief that God is here with you and will perfect his will in your life, shout a bigger hallelujah. Let us have a seat before God. Please, this is a Bible reading church. You need to have your Bible. And please, I need the choir to help me with the reading of all that we read. And, but if you are amidst the congregation and you want to read, get a mic from one of the side men or side women. We have like a three or more mics that are still open. May God bless all of us in the name of Jesus. Amen. If you are happy and you know, say amen. amen. If you are happy and you know, say amen. amen. Even if you feel you are not happy. But you know that God can resolve your issues to happiness. Eh? If you really want to show that your God is really able, if you are happy and you know, say amen. amen. You see, some people, you say amen and you're just sitting down, the last one should be filled with, you know, your, your energy. May God bless all of us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let us have a seat, the ushers. Uh, let's take a time please every usher that knows how to read the bible should have a mic you know instead of handing the mic to our mothers you know that is that is not a good thing may god help us in the name of jesus somebody shout hallelujah let us open to the book of matthew just sit down don't worry open to the book of matthew this is going to be our standing point as you can see the word of god the team is seeking the Lord our God. And it's very funny about the way the lessons is in Celestial Church of Christ. That this same first and second lesson has been treated six times by myself alone. Treated by the elders of this church like three times. Our Father and the Lord even treated this topic. Same topic, same lesson. But now God is going to give us another understanding. May God perfect his will in the name of Jesus. Amen. Can you look at the person beside you that is seeking the Lord our God? Look at another person. If that person is not smiling at you, say, seeking the Lord our God. Find somebody that is pretty enough to walk with your spirit and say, seeking the Lord our God. Somebody shout, hallelujah. So Matthew 28, we are going to read 16. We are going to read through to 20. Then the 11 disciples. Mommy, we are going to read it together. Uh, thank you, Mommy. You see, Mommy is trying to, you know, outsmart every, every, everyone in the church. May God bless all of us in the name of Jesus. Mommy, oh, oh. somebody shout hallelujah. Because I know the choir will start drumming and then will take forever. So Matthew 16. Since mommy wants to read, mommy just read it. And everybody should look at it. Mommy read it. Matthew 28, 16. We are going to read 16 to 20. Then the 11 disciples uh -huh. went to Galilee. Went to Galilee. To the mountain. Excuse me. To the mountain yes. where Jesus has told them. Uh -huh. When they saw him, when they saw Christ, they worshipped him. Uh -huh. But some doubted. Yes. Then Jesus came to the, uh -huh. them and said, yes. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Who has every authority been given to? Jesus. Uh -huh. Therefore, yes. go and make disciples of all nations. Yes baptizing them in the name of the Father uh -huh. and of the Son yes. and of the Holy Spirit yes. and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you yes. and surely yes. I am with you always uh -huh. to the very end of the age. Somebody shout hallelujah. Sit down and God bless you. That is something you see when I first got converted as a Christian you know when we got into secondary school that's when we got to understand the word born again 
And when the Lord touched my heart and I got converted, this was this very verses that I love most. And the part that I love most is the last verse where it says, And surely I am with you always to the end of age. I want you to look at this. So this to me meant absolute belief that nothing can go wrong because I have God with me. See, I was young and very naive. So I have the faith that nothing can go wrong. Since now that I have confessed Christ, since now that I have accepted Christ, since now that is the Lord and personal Savior of my life, nothing should go wrong. And I have faith that God will protect me. It was an absolute faith, perfect protection because of this word. Perfect guidance because I have the presence of God with me. And it almost became like a cause later. Because when things go wrong, then I begin to ask myself this question. I thought you said you are going to be with me always. I thought that was the promise. That if I can confess you as my Lord and personal Savior, you are going to be with me always. So why am I going through this? And I think many of us have asked that question. When we look and we say, God, at least I have tried. Yes, I'm human. That might be sin. We cannot be perfect completely. But then we ask God, why, you know, you said you, you promised this, especially when there is some promises. I pray that God will be with all of us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Some of us might be asking, where is God in my situation? Eh? Where is God in my challenges? Where is God in my trouble? Where is God when I needed him? Please, if you have a child that's going to make noise, have the child with you before I begin to find you a million dollars now. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Have you ever asked that question before? That God, why is this happening with my worship? With many things that I've done. The same is with Israel. I want you to understand this, that it's simple. God does not entertain sin. God is the righteous God. If you believe God is the righteous God, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. If you believe that sin is unrighteousness, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. So can the two be woven together? We are made in the image of God. Even the temple of God is in us. So God resides in us. But the point is, once you allow a little of sin, and it corrupts the temple which is in you then one master has to back it for another and that is why most of the time god will just say you know you've chosen your own path let him rule over your life i pray that sin will never rule over our life in the name of jesus let us look at the book of isaiah 59 1 and 2 Isaiah 59, 1 and 2. If you have the mic, if you are blessed. Behold. Yes. The Lord's hand is not short. God's hand is never short to save. You got to read it completely. It's not too, too short to save. Uh huh. That he cannot save. Uh huh. Neither is here heavy. Uh huh. That he cannot hear. Yes. But you, your iniquities, uh -huh. have separated between you and your God. It is your iniquity that has separated you and your God. Uh -huh. And your sins have hid his face from you. Yes. That he will not hear. I pray that God will continue to hear us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Have a seat. God bless you. Once you take in sin, it corrupts the temple. And that means you are bringing a new master. Like I've told us in this church, whatever you yield to will control you. If you yield to sin, sin will control you. If you yield to evil, evil will control you. If you yield to good, good will control you. So God now would hide his face. The voice is now not heard. The worship, the praise, the prayer 
and the praises becomes something that loses savour. You know, it's like when you cook and the soup loses taste. Are you going to continue eating it? And some people might continue eating it, but when you give it to me as a husband, I will tell you, I'm sorry, I cannot eat this. I think my wife knows that. I pray that God will be with us in the name of Jesus. So when it comes to the first lesson, Israel, which is the book of Hosea chapter 10, you can open it down. Um, I'll tell you where to read. I think even we might be reading just that verse 10, the beginning verse. With 12, verse 12. So Israel brought in sin. Their temple became corrupt. They were so corrupted with sin to the level that unrighteousness ruled in every area. And one of the things that they do is instead of them to return to God, they begin to form alliances. You know, since they know they have sinned, they know they don't have God's protection anymore. For them to run to God, no, they said no. They begin to make alliances with Egypt, make alliances with Syrians, make alliances with those that God has asked them not to yoke with. And so God has to send someone to them, and that is what we find in the book of Hosea. Now, before we read the book of Hosea, I'm going to ask you this question. Can you tell me how a Christian would look without God, when you don't have the presence of God? If a Christian loses God, what do you think the Christian, Christian would look like? I want to believe the Christian will look dry. I want to believe that that Christian will look powerless to every spirit of powers that flows around. In fact, the Christian will look religious. What the enemy will see is just a religious person. You go to church on Sunday, you are the one that minister, you are the shepherd, you are the service conductor, you are the one that does everything. But then, as long as the temple in you is corrupted, there is nothing that anyone will see that is powerful or great in life than a powerless, a walking corpse. Lack of the real life. And when it comes to the church of God, which I'm talking about a corporate church, a corporate community in terms of sin, they become a church of entertainers. That's what most churches are today. You many go to church to get entertained. Now we have churches whereby you have comedians that will come and crack joke for you so that you can smile because, you know, because that laughter has been lost. And now you have to improvise. I pray that God will be with us in the name of Jesus. A church without God is just a building without the presence of God, a building without purpose, a building without vision, a building without vision. And everyone that attends such church loses his call if that person is not careful because your, the friend that you yoke with will tell me who you are show me your friend and i can tell some people will say no it doesn't matter can i have any out friends eh? have any out friends they will be rubbing on you little by little before you know you become any out you will not become any out in the name of jesus somebody shout hallelujah so let us read that verse 12 of Hosea 12. So righteousness for yourself. Uh -huh. Reap the fruit of unfolding love. Reap the fruit of unfolding love. Has anybody heard this verse in this church? If you have heard this verse like 15 times, shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh-huh, yes. And break up your unplowed ground. Yes. For it is time to seek the Lord. It is time to seek the Lord. Until he comes. You have to seek him until he agrees, until he has mercy, until he comes uh -huh. and showers his righteousness on you because that is the only time that your righteousness can be cleansed out and that is the only time that you become righteous god bless you man let us have a seat are you with me somebody shout hallelujah Jose has to tell them it is time to seek god and that seeking God has to be now. You have to continuously seek God until He comes. Which means He's far away from you. He's far away from those that are not doing right. He will never be far away from us in the name of Jesus. Amen. So until He comes, when God comes, that is when He will now take the unrighteousness out and make you righteous. And that's why I love some Indian Celestia. 
He said, DJ Zubati, Kawa Wule, Saint Michael, you so can see you. Baba Wule, Tom, Michael Bate, Kawa Ele She Watoro. Because it is until Christ come, that is when righteousness can rule. That is when we can be acceptable. Even before him. That is when we can be called righteous. Because is there anybody against us for the past two weeks that have not committed a sin? Whether it is knowingly or unknowingly, by thought or by speech. I pray that the Lord will be with us in the name of Jesus. But the question is, if it is time to seek the Lord, our God, what are you seeking? Because it depends on what your focus in, what your heart is on, what you want to get. That is what will make you seek somebody. We all have friends. We have some friends that they are only for some certain time, seasonal. Because what we seek for them is only seasonal things. You have friends that even if there's troubles in the middle of the night, you can call. But there are some friends that you cannot call in the middle of the night. You know, if you call them, it's a waste of time. Can you look at somebody and say, why do you seek the Lord? Ah, hey, now, look at somebody and say, why do you seek the Lord? Look at somebody that you know that would really, really answer you. Why do you seek the Lord? When it comes to blind Bartimaeus, he was seeking the Lord for healing to get his eyes open. He stood until Christ was passing. And then he cried out to our Lord Jesus Christ, son of David, help me. That was his, he didn't seek God for salvation. He didn't seek God to get to heaven. He seek God so that his eyes can be opened. When it comes to the woman with the issue of blood, when, it was, when she was coming after Christ, it was only for healing. So that this blood that has become issues, stop. She has visited every place and nothing has happened. But now I want to touch Christ so that it can stop. And she got it. When it comes to Zacchaeus, it was anxiousness. I just want to know who this guy is. And what did Zacchaeus do? He ran, climbed up the tree just to see Jesus. And that day, Christ told him, today I am entering into your house. When it comes to Nicodemus, he went to ask about what? Born, being born again. How do I become born again? But then when it comes to a man that asks the right question, but got the answer that he doesn't want. The Yiddish young ruler, when he came to ask about eternity, and Christ told him what he would have to lose to gain life, he was the only one that went without being filled because he was not happy. What about you? Why do you come to God? If I ask you, are you coming to God just because you had the revelation, you know, a prophecy told you, you have to be at church, and that is why you're being at church. Is it because the shepherd told you, you know, you, you, you're going behind, you're not making things happen, is that why you come to church? What is the purpose of your coming before God? Why do you seek God? Do you seek God for money? Do you seek God for promotion? Are you seeking God for employment? Are you seeking God so that you can get a husband? Are you seeking God so I can get a good wife? Are you seeking God so you can get spouse? Take your son with you. I just told you one time. Again, I'm not going to repeat it. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Take him with you. Hallelujah. Go carry your son. Go carry your son. Go carry your son. Go carry your son. God bless us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let me tell you something. There is something that Christ told us that embodies all the things that we need in life. Matthew 6. Somebody should read 31 to 33. Whether you want a child. Matthew number so two. do not worry do not worry saying uh -huh. what shall we eat what shall i eat can somebody say what shall i eat, what shall I eat? you know that is that is what everybody worry about eh? six from 31 eh? so what shall i eat you know most of us we will just 
look at our fridge and say, hey, there's nothing special. What shall I eat? And then we'll go to Walmart and get all the things that we want. Uh-huh. Or what shall we drink? Or what shall I drink? Uh-huh. Or what shall we wear? You see, this is the most important thing to somebody. They want to show them at work. They want to show them in the family. They want to show them in party. Just show them. Show them. Let them know. One back, one back, one back. One man back. They will show them. Even when they come to church, it is show them that something will come to do. They have never come to God alone. When they are dressing, their mindset is never... I am dressing to please God. It is ah, that woman. She thought she wore a necklace last week. That's weak. I'm going to show her that I have bangles, gold that are special, and then they put it all on. That is, you know, that's what some people worry about. Uh huh. For pagans run after all these things. Pagans run after all of these things. Pagans run after how to get a car. Pagans run after getting the best job. Pagans run after having the best wife. All these things that we run after. Pagans also run after it. Uh -huh. And your heavenly father knows that you need them. And God knows that you need them. Can somebody here tell me that God doesn't understand that, that they need, that you have some needs? If you're that person that you believe that God doesn't understand that you have some needs, then that means you don't have that God. You must as well go to that other God that you believe in. But God understands your needs. Even when you don't say it, he knows what you need. He knows you need to be clothed. He knows you need a child. He knows you need a husband. He knows you need a wife. He knows you need a house. He knows you need resolution to those troubles. Uh huh. But seek his kingdom first. Uh huh. And his righteousness. Yes. And all these things will be given unto you as well. What was the answer? Seek his kingdom first and righteousness. And you see, all other things will be added. Sit down, God bless you, man. Seek his kingdom first. Can you look at somebody and say, Seek kingdom first? Seek the kingdom of God first. Look at another person, say, Seek the kingdom of God first. That is the thing. Seek God, seek righteousness, and every other thing will be added unto you. But what do we do? We first of all seek how to pay our bills. And by seeking how to pay our bills, we miss out on so many things. We, we just let God, we want to believe. Is it there's some words that I've used before that when people use these days, I look at them and smile. What's that word? God understands. God understands that I've got to pay bills. God understands that my husband, you know, is being on a very good trip. He just came back on Saturday. I've got to be with him on Sunday. God understands that my child, they are just home now. I've got to stay with them. We will put so many things as God understands. Now, if you need anything and God does not give it to you, why don't you say God understand why he has not given to me? You know, most of us will be grumbling. In fact, sometimes we will say the shepherd, that shepherd is not powerful. You know, he, he, he prayed on me and, you know, for a week I didn't even get what I wanted. You begin to blame it on the shepherd, you blame it on, in fact, you blame it on wishes, wizard, or banjo, you blame it on everybody else but you. Most of us will never look at ourselves and say, okay, where? Yeah, what, what is that thing? And the Lord told us, seek the kingdom of God first and his righteousness. Seek the kingdom of God first and his righteousness. May God be with us in the name of Jesus. Please, can you let that, my brother, in? Take off your shoe, come in. With the brother, I said, brother, and you're standing and looking. Come and see the light, the light of God. Come and see the light of heaven. Amen. Come and see the light, the light of God. Come and see the light of heaven. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. I love my choir so much. When they hear sing, they want to melodize everything. And by putting it into melody, we are going to take a long time. May God bless this choir in the name of Jesus. Amen. You see, the kingdom of God is whatever that God owns. Whatever that God controls. That is what the kingdom of God is. Can you tell me something on this earth that God does not own? Can you tell me on this earth that God does not control? That is the kingdom of God. Everything is God's kingdom. Not only ever. He owns all of that, all of that. 
yeah, he created seven heavens and even the seven hearts, the sun and the moon. Is is. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. But what do we do? We will seek first our own kingdom first. I want to become the richest person in Citizens Global. That is all we are concerned about. I want to make sure that nobody rises up like me. That is all we are all about. Oh my goodness, that's Sultana that the shepherd will, he wants to tell me is richer than me. I've got to go get a special one. That is all. And by running, we're running from pillar to post. And some people get collided by the post. We will never collide with the post in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout hallelujah. And God's righteousness is God's nature. It's his divine nature. It's a righteous God. That is God's righteousness, nature, is God's nature. It's a lifestyle of holiness. A lifetime of holiness. Can you look at me and say lifetime of holiness? Lifetime of holiness. Eh? Look at me and say lifetime of holiness, shepherd. And look at somebody that needs God and say lifetime of holiness. You should have looked at me. I'm the one that needs God. May God help us in the name of Jesus. The question is, how can a corrupt man of mind seek God? How can? Because many of us here have issues with sin one way or the other. How do we now seek God? Are you with me? Please let us just face aside and leave everybody. Huh? How can I? Can you ask yourself, how can I seek God? Are you asking yourself or not? How can I seek God? Uh, you know, I'm not seeing you ask yourself. You see the way I'm asking, how can I seek God? Huh? Romans 3.23 Romans 3.23 And you are Christ and Christ is God's. Hey, well, kill and Romans 3.23 3, Yeah. Are uh, sure? Yeah. I like oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. That's for all have sinned uh, and fall short of the glory of God. I'm very good, uh, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And all are justified uh -huh. freely by his grace. Yes. Through the redemption redemption by Christ. That came by Christ, Christ Jesus. Jesus. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. God bless you, Masidama. We have all sinned. How do we now seek God? Eh? There's no one that is righteous here. If you are righteous, shout hallelujah. You are, you are righteous. Oh Lord, do we have Evangelists don't get a nickname here. Don't let people start calling you. Do, 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 do. There are two significant things that need to occur in your life to know yourself as a true child of God. Two. The first one is a natural birth, which we all go through. We are born in sin. Like some people will pray. We live in sin. Like some people will say. A life that is way apart from God's righteousness. A life that does not lead to the kingdom of God. All of us, we go through that. But then the second experience is what some people call born again. But I call it having Christ. Some people, eh, they, 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 they can only confess by what? They said, I confess that I confess Jesus Christ as my Lord and personal Savior, blah, 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 da, 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 da. Amen, amen. And they say, go, and you have received Christ, and that's it. And that person will receive Christ, and when it goes out, it goes out into crisis. That will never be our case in the name of Jesus. How do you get rebirth in Christ? How do you experience the water and the spirit baptism not just the dipping into the water but living a life like christ the number one thing is true repentance true repentance second chronicles seven fourteen. i'm going to ask you a question if somebody did you wrong and you felt so much hurt if the person is so wrong that everyone is saying ah, ask for forgiveness but say no i'm not going to ask for forgiveness would you 
truly forgive that person. I'm telling you, that answer is wrong. We would forgive, but we will never forget. We will still hold it somewhere. That is not a complete forgiveness. Because we are saying this person, one day, ah, it will enter my hand. I will show him pepper. May God help us in the name of Jesus. Second Chronicles seven fourteen. If my people, if my people who are called by my name, who are called by my name, will humble themselves, first humble yourself and pray, pray and seek my face, seek the face of God and turn from their wicked you ways. See, you will now turn. Not only when they call altar call, you just come into the middle and you say, Lord Jesus, I give my life to you. And then after that, you go out and you live the same life. And then next one again, Lord Jesus. You are like the apostolic faith. You know, I told you I have a friend when I was in school. Every time he prays like this, he will be crying. Like crying and confessing. Since that, when it's done, I'll fight him about it. So, Emilio, you, took, you stole my things that you didn't tell me. You know, he will be confessing all of these things. He doesn't hide it. But when it's done, let's say he confessed on Monday. Monday will be nice. By Tuesday, it is another kingdom ruling. I'm telling you, by Friday, he's already far away from the, from the repentance that he did on Monday. Then Sunday again, he will start. So every Sunday, I will make sure that I'm home to listen to his prayer. Because he will confess even the things that he did to me. And then I will show him better all through the week. May God be with us in the name of Jesus. I was young. What do I know? Uh-huh. Can you go again? Let's start from humble themselves. If my people yes. who are called by my name yes. will humble themselves humble yourself and pray, pray and seek my face, seek God's face and turn from their wicked ways. Turn from your wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven. Then, then not only when you pray, not only when you are humble, not only you have to turn, not only when you seek him, until you turn, then uh-huh. Will I hear from heaven? Yes. And we forgive their sin. Yes. And will heal their land. Somebody shout hallelujah. God bless you in the name of Jesus. God bless all of us. Sit down. You see that Psalm 51 does not work here. Many of us that believe so much in Psalm 51. We say the Psalm of David when he did the worst thing. This was the Psalm he used. And we will read it like 21 times. 91 times. And then when we're done we say yes I am forgiven. And then we'll go. Mm -mm. You have to turn from your wicked ways. When you do this, that is when grace becomes involved in your situation. That is when mercy and forgiveness become involved in your situation. That is when the gift of righteousness is handed over to you. And that is the, what is when the ability to receive the Holy Spirit comes into you. Can you look at someone that said confess? Can you look at someone that said turn? That is the only time. If you don't confess, then turn. If you are only confessing and not turning from the wicked ways, it's a waste of time. A friend of mine told me, he said, when God is saying, seek my face, and it's written in the Exodus, I think, 33, 20, that anyone that, when God was speaking to Moses, that anyone that sees my face will die. I look at him and smile. I said, don't you understand that that is still in existence, but it's in another form. Now what it does is when you seek the God face, every time you seek his face, he eliminates every negativity that is in you. If you truly seek his face. Those, the things that dies in you are those things that are not good. If you truly seek his face. If you truly turn, God will kill. You see, that's why I tell people sometimes we are praying, Ulua, God, let me not smoke again. Let me not smoke again. Let me not smoke again. God is not going to do that for you. You have to try. And then seek him truly. Make a commitment. You know, I want to worship you. And I know that my angels are not like this. How do I serve you? Help me, God. When you truly turn, when you truly confess, when you truly pray, when you truly seek his face, that is when God will make those things happen. Most things that we want cannot be done by our flesh. The flesh will let in a very bad way. It is only the spirit that can conquer the flesh. Can somebody shout hallelujah? If you are with me, shout hallelujah. If you are with me, shout hallelujah. If you are with me, shout hallelujah. 
You see, since Christ come, died, death resurrected, that first death is taken away. That first death. God told Moses that because he still carries the sin of Adam. But for us, it's a different thing. Every old habit is supposed to be the thing that should die. A new habit should begin to grow. Can you look at somebody said, get new habits from God. May God help us in the name of Jesus. So number one thing is repentance. And the second thing now is true attentiveness. I call it attentiveness because you need to pay attention. Can you look at somebody that said, pay attention. Daniel did something in Daniel 9 verse 3. Daniel 9 verse 3. Are we there? No? Yes? So I turned to the Lord God and pleaded. So I turned to the Lord God, uh huh. So I, I turned to the Lord God yes. and pleaded. And with pleaded him. with him in prayer. In prayer. And petition. And petition. In fasting. In fasting. And in sackcloth and ashes. Yes, the only way that you can plead with God is because you now have a relationship with God. There is no way that you get relationship with anyone unless you are attentive to that person. We all have, for those that are married here, for those that are spouse, if you don't pay attention to some things in your house that has to do with your spouse, or maybe unless you just neglect, you don't pay attention, what do you think is going to happen? The relationship will do what? Will collapse. May our relationship never collapse in the name of Jesus. You need to pay what are called exclusive attention to God. Exclusive attention to God. Not only in prayer, in petition, in your heart, in your speech. And what this means is just that you got to make sure that you're looking only unto Jesus, looking only unto God as your only source. You know, many of us don't have Jesus as the only source. We have many sources. When we run around those sources, we call this pastor, it didn't work. We call that prophet, it didn't work. You call other prophet, it didn't work. You go to Babalawo, it didn't work. Then you just say, ah, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. You see, thank God I'm not Jesus. It would have been a very wonderful experience. May God be with us in the name of Jesus. May God be with us in the name of Jesus. May God be with us in the name of Jesus. When you pay attention to someone, your love grows towards that person without hindrance. Your love will grow towards that person without hindrance. That's the purpose of paying attention. I'm telling you, if you pay attention, you just begin to see some things that makes you understand the person more, that makes you know how to walk around, do things that will not cause trouble. Your love begins to grow. So the first thing I told us is repentance. The second thing is that paying attentiveness. And the third thing is you have to set your heart on our Lord Jesus Christ. You have to set your heart. Jeremiah 29, 12 to 14. Jeremiah 29, 12 to 14. Are we there? Jeremiah 29. Thank you, Daddy. Mm -hmm. oh. For I know the plans I have for you. Are you reading 12? Yes, 12. Then you will call upon me uh -huh. and come yes. and pray to me uh -huh. and I will listen to you. Uh -huh. You will seek me uh -huh. and I will listen to you. Uh -huh. You will find me uh -huh. when you seek me with all your heart. When you seek me with all your heart, that is the only time you would find God. It is not with a partial heart. It is with all. Many of us, we have some, we have already splitted our hearts. One part is for your wife. One part is for your children. One part is for money. One part is for the job. One part is for the family. And then you're trying to create. Not that you have room. You are now trying to create room for Jesus. 
you're trying hard some people are even trying hard to create room for jesus but then if you don't seek god with all your heart you cannot can you see why most people are praying and not receiving that they will bring seven candle born for coconut born 21 coconut call out the prophet in the world do whatever and it's not still answering and now they will be saying it is the church is it the prophet is it the prayer it is the elders one of the elders doesn't like me no because the first thing you need to do is to seek god with all your heart and then every other thing you will seek you will find him uh-huh 14. 14. yeah hmm. i will find by you uh-huh declares the lord uh-huh and we bring you back uh-huh from captivity yes i will gather you from all nations uh-huh and places where i have banished you uh-huh declares the lord yes and i will bring you back to the place yes from which i carried you into exile uh-huh you may say yes the lord has raised let's, up from let's hold it let's hold it there god bless you in the name of jesus god will bless his church in the name of jesus when you seek up with all your heart is it that trouble that you hear God will pull you out of it and place you in a glorious place. That is what he's saying here. When you're seeking with all, he said, he said, you will find me and I will find you. Then I will bring you back. I'll bring you out of that captivity. You see those witches, those wizards, those advantages, or those family problems, whatever. Once you seek God diligently, he will take you out of those troubles and place you in a place of comfort. But you know what once we have those little things those are the things we want to face and we will not just neglect god some people can pray seven days fasting 14 days fasting 90 days fasting all in the name of the enemy not one will be about father i thank you father i give you glory for giving me the grace to be here it is just die die fire fire die die fire fire die die if everybody die and it's fire of everyone who will be left may god help us in the name of jesus Amen. When you observe many of these, that kingdom that Adam was lost, has lost, will be handed over to you. That's the point. That kingdom that was lost will be handed over to you. You see, there are many things that I don't care about anymore. And my wife can testify. I don't care. Once God first, every other thing follows. If you disagree with that, I will disagree with you. If you agree with that, we will agree together. May God help us in the name of Jesus. There's a hymn that we have in Celestial Church of Christ, hymn number 55. It says something. Hymn number 55. Don't worry, I know everybody is trying to grumble. We'll soon bring it to a close. Don't grumble. Somebody shout hallelujah. Worship the Lord our God. Yes. Worship ye devotedly. Yes. Worship, worship the Lord of life. Uh-huh. He is the King of Kings. Yes. That speaks from a board of light. Yes. Chant ye, chant ye, Osana. Yes. Osana is our victory. God bless you. Just hold it there. You can sit down. If you look at the Yoruba, the Yoruba version gave us this this sensitive understanding of the word worship devotedly. S C Tokon Tokon. Worship him Tokon with the whole of your heart, not minding keeping anything down just be open to god and worship him freely you come to church you please i tell people once you come to church that trouble about husband children a job drop it outside and just worship god like never before and then you see god start to make all those things work but what do we do we will put the problem before us and even when they are singing we will be standing when they are doing this, we will just be, we will just say, Lord, 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 Lord. From the beginning to the service, it's Lord, help me. Lord, did this. Nothing like our hearts being open. May God help all of us in the name of Jesus. Amen. And the final part is in the second Bible reading, the book of Acts. That is the last thing that we need. So like I told us, the first is repentance. The second is attentiveness. And the third is setting your heart on our Lord Jesus Christ. But we have the last one, which is one of the most important of all. The book of Acts chapter 5 that was read from verse 1 to 11. And that one is about being honest with your maker. Now, uh -huh. a man named Ananias, yes. together with his wife, Sapphira, uh -huh. also sold a piece of property. Yes, this was their own land. They sold it. It was, yes, it was nobody's. They sold it. Uh -huh. 
with his wife's full knowledge. Yes. He kept back part of the money for himself, uh -huh. but brought the rest and put it at the apostles' feet. Yes. Then Peter said, mm -hmm. Ananias, yes. how is it that Satan has so filled your heart? I want you to hold this. How can keeping some part of the, the land that I sold, how can it become Satan filling my heart? Do you know why? It is because if you look at chapter 4, chapter 3 and chapter 4, the disciples were growing and many began to volunteer their property. That don't worry, I'm going to sell my property and I'm going to bring it to help the people. So, but when they sold theirs, instead of bringing it, they took out of it. And because of that, Satan, you see, this is what I thought about. One sin comes in and corrupts the temple. You have yielded to another God. And then the true God would vacate. Because now you're saying, because God will not control your will. Sorry, mommy, that I'm keeping you waiting. Revelation 3.20 said, I am standing knocking at the door. If you open, then I will come in. Which means God cannot control your will. If you open, it will come in. If you close the door, it will not come in. It's as simple as that. So when you yield to God, it will help you. If you don't yield to God, mm -hmm, if you open your heart, it will come in. If you don't open your heart, that's your problem. It doesn't affect God. Whether you worship, whether you don't, whether you praise, whether you don't praise, whether you whether this church is open or open again, it does not concern God. What concerns God is once your will is attached to Him, then you become God's concern. You, God begins to think about it, God begins to help you. So they took something apart and drew that Satan ruled over the family. Uh huh. Then Peter said, Yes. Ananias, yes. how is it that Satan has so filled your heart uh -huh. that you have lied to the Holy Spirit uh -huh. and have kept for yourself yes. some of the money mm -hmm. you received from the land? Uh -huh. Didn't it belong to you before it was sold? It was all yours. You see, that's the problem that we have. Your heart is yours. Your hand is yours. Your body part is yours. Everything that is physical, that is yours, is yours. Though God give it to you. If you yield it to God, God will help it, make it better, rule it, make it function well. But if you say, God, I don't need you, why would God force you? God does not force anybody against their will. That is the number one thing. That is the trouble that many has. They believe God. God, you should have told me that I'm not supposed to do this. Uh -huh. You should have known that it's against God's will. That is the point. You know, some, especially many of our prophets, they say, God should have told me before I went there. At least you told me yesterday, uh -uh, you did not place God first. So God will allow you to do your will. Go, go on, man. And after it was sold, yes. was it the money at your disposal? It was yours. You should have not even brought it. Nobody would care. Uh -huh. What made you think of doing such a thing? Yes. You have not lied just to human beings, but to God. May God be with us in the name of Jesus. The rest is the story. He died, the wife died. Sit down, man. The rest is the story. Let me tell you. Once you say, I am going to Christ, once you say, God, I want to belong to you, you have to be honest about it. Give it to him completely. When you begin to play, you know, many of us, we play all of these things with God. Eh? I have a friend, when he's going to any, many, any, any bad places, he say, Lord Jesus Christ, I love you, but stay in the car. You can't go into this place with me. And then when he goes and he comes back, say, thank you, Lord Jesus, for not going with me. I look at him and say, you're lying. Eh? God sees all, knows all, and condemns all acts that is not his, because unrighteousness cannot live with him. So why can't you just be honest with God? Honestly seek God. Honestly pay attention. Honestly repent. Honestly turn from your bad ways. Honestly do all of this. Thing. That is the thing. I bet if you do that, you see all those troubles that you think you have, God will fix it all. I'm telling you, God is master, he will fix it all completely. And then you will just see that, oh, the, the struggles is not there anymore. It is now peace. It is now joy. It is now happiness. May God make that ours in the name of Jesus. Amen. I want to tell you that you are an ambassador of Christ on this heart. Oh Lord, say no job me more. Oh Lord, say no job me more. Oh, the power of me. Do you know how many times that we bada, bada, bada? Not living by our actions, we go back. 
we said we wrote good things, that we do good things. But how many times have you done bad things? That is going back. I have used my hand to write good tidings. That I will not look back again. You wrote good tidings, I will not look back. But how many times have you used that hand to do bad tidings? You used your leg to do bad tidings, you used your thought to do bad tidings. And then you say you will not, you will not look back again. That is how Celestia is, if you want to understand Celestia. May God be with us in the name of Jesus. I want to tell you if you, have, if you truly have Christ, if you are honest, you repent, is that you turn to God. Faith will rule over you. But if not, then fear will rule over the person. When fear rules, many things go wrong. When fear rules, fear of losing the husband, fear of losing their wife, fear of losing children, fear of this, fear of how can I do this, that is because you don't have Christ. If you have Christ, even, even if all the world is collapsing, you would have faith that you still be standing. Because you know that God will never forsake nor leave his people. He said, I have with you always till the end of time. The point is, are you with God always till the end of time? Because if you are not with God, then God cannot be with you. God does not control your will. You control your will. Let us rise on our feet. Let us rise on our feet. Into my heart, into my heart, come into my heart, Lord Jesus, come in today, come in to stay, come into my heart. Lord Jesus. Let us just bow our heads and use a minute to just confess your sin silently. Because if I say confess your sin loudly, nobody would confess the sin truly. Silently confess your sin. Silently put your petition before God. Silently humble yourself. Silently turn from your wicked ways. And silently give your heart to Christ. And be honest at this time with God, that God, I am using my hand to write good tidings. Help me to not look back again. Help me to not do wrong again. If you have confessed your sin, ask that, ask for the power of the Holy Spirit. Tell God, Father, I want this rebirth to be an everlasting one. Brought me with the water and your spirit. Let there be a baptism of fire upon me. Let there be a baptism of renewal ones upon me. Let there be a baptism of rejuvenation upon me. Let there be a baptism of restoration in my life. Just begin to speak to God. Remember that the word of God said, if you seek God, every other thing will be added. Tell God, Father, I seek you wholeheartedly. I yield to you. I yield my life. I yield my home. I yield my relationship. Everything I yield to you. Father, Take charge, be in control, and let it all be for your glory. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 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 In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. I pray for you at this time in the name of Jehovah Jesus Christ, Holy Michael, that God in his grace and power would forgive your sins in the name of Jesus. Amen. That God will forgive my sins in the name of Jesus. Amen. We yield it all to you, Almighty God, our heart, our life, our home, everything. Father, take charge in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let everything that we do from now on be things that will glorify your name in the name of Jesus. We have used our hands, our mouths, all our body parts to write good tidings today. We will not go back to sin again in the name of Jesus. Amen. We will not go back to Satan again in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let your Holy Spirit direct our life. Amen. Let your Holy Spirit rule over our life. Let your Holy Spirit take control. Father, at the end of our sojourn on heart, this word that says you do not know us may never come to us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' holy and mighty name, I pray. Amen. Amen.